So this broadcast is the property of Codependence Anonymous. Uh, reproduction without written permission from Codependence Anonymous, Anonymous is not permitted. So we'll start with uh, Coda opening prayer. In the spirit of love and truth, we ask our higher power to guide us as we share our experience, strength, and hope. We open our hearts to the light of wisdom, the warmth of love, and the joy of acceptance. Okay. I'm a moderator, and, uh, you know, I'm having a problem in that I don't always get everybody here. I'm trying to look at the moderator's format here and trying to stay with you guys too at the same time so I may not know that uh, extra people come on so anyway I am from British Columbia Canada and I'm going to introduce the panelists not everybody's on yet but I will uh, uh, Crystal C she's from um, uh, British Columbia and JG he's from Pennsylvania uh, Paula uh, is from Manitoba. Manitoba. Richard's not on yet, but he's also from Manitoba. Well, no, he's now in Saskatchewan. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dan R. He's from Ontario. I think that's it. And the only person who's missing on that particular thing is Richard. He may be trying to get on. <clears throat> uh, the presentation uh, will... Uh, we have um, uh, just to point, point out, point. I am on here. Oh, uh, good. Hi, uh, hi, Richard. Good to have you. <laughs> I think so, you might have to scroll up on the participants list because I'm at the top, having come in later. Okay, great. Um, so we'll have up to one hour to do the presentation. Uh, if people have questions, they can put. Uh, they can either just write it down for later. Or put it in the chat box, and we'll read the chat box. And uh, and then I will start uh, time when we're finished with our presentations. We'll uh, uh, give time for present uh, for questions. So um, I will start out. And uh, Dan, I asked you if you would mind starting uh, the presentations. I'm first at bat. Yeah, you're first at that. <laughs> All righty. So any time? Yeah, I'll, get, uh, I'll, yeah. I'll do a timer and I'll tell you. Um, yeah, please now. do. Okay. I have a tendency of going over my, my time limit. <laughs> okay, I'll give you one minute uh, to uh, if you're going over that. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, hi everybody. My name is Dan. I'm a grateful, recovering codependent. Um, I first caught wind of this uh, form oh, a couple of months ago, I guess. And uh, I had just met with a, a sponsee who did his fifth step. And I'm thinking, wow, talk about uh, providence, higher power playing a role here. And it kind of uh, got my mojo going about wanting to share about the fifth step when I heard about the forum. Um, Some notes that I wrote here to remind me, uh, because I I do have a tendency of of going over my my time slot. Um, The fifth step, uh, of course, following the fourth step is, is very important as they all are. But that fifth step, uh, in my mind, is is a process that begins day one when I meet my sponsee, um, from the sponsor point of view, of course. Um, when I first meet my sponsee, I, of course, we we try to get on the same page. We express each our our um, our wishes and expectations we may have. Uh, and especially for myself as the sponsor, what does the sponsee intend to achieve by being in in a relationship? Because basically sponsor, sponsee is a relationship like any other. 
a very spiritual relationship. Um, and I've discovered uh, with the various sponsees I've had that the the process that happens at that moment at the fifth step when the sponsee kind of really opens up about most of what he he or she has discovered actually does start right at the beginning. Um, a sponsee who's into his recovery, uh, things kind of click a little bit more quickly. For somebody who is totally at loss with the the, the disease, if you wish, um, and really don't know what's happening in their recovery, the process is a little bit slower. But one of the principles I try to practice is to make the sponsee understand that they're discovering themselves. And myself having been, and I still am a sponsee, of course, I, I do get in touch with my sponsor as often as I can. Um, it's this moment where I need to reach out and get somebody else's experience, strength, and hope as a sponsee. So being the sponsor, of course, the tables are turned. And I try to make the, the sponsee as comfortable as possible and make them understand that they are not alone, that I've been through this process. And right from the get, <clears throat> excuse me, right from the get go, I make them understand that whatever they are saying, I'm listening. I consider it everything they say as being totally relevant, being real, as real as it is to them. Um, there are a number of qualities that I think that come to the top when speaking about being a sponsor. Um, and, and one of them is, is carrying the message that I've picked up in Coda, being a regular member, being in relationships, being in service work, um, and that I am there to to follow their path in their discovery of themselves to find the authentic self. And that fifth step is, is definitely the uh, meat and potatoes as far as the sponsee opening up and just letting it all out. And I kind of liken that to, in a sense, to um, every time the sponsee speaks, they are letting out a little bit of that disease out. They're letting it show. And if they're unclear about what is happening or what they're feeling, my role is to kind of guide them, maybe point something out, uh, especially if they ask. If they haven't asked and it's something important that I feel they possibly would, uh, they're ready to hear, I'll ask them, can I share something with you? And I've, I've never received a no. So I, I kind of go ahead and as appropriately and respectfully as possible, share what, what I hear and what the sponsee is relaying to me and what, and, and their discovery of having done their four step. But like I say, the process starts from the beginning and, uh, I, I guess I won't use the word lucky, but I've had sponsees who have really been committed to their recovery and right from the get go start understanding by working, you know, the various questions that are asked in, in the workbook uh, from steps one right through till four. Um, and I kind of, uh, how would I put it, nudge them along that journey. So right from the beginning, I need to establish a, a type of, relationship or a chemistry with the person to make them feel comfortable. Uh, I guess that's probably because of my own, um, the sources of my codependency where I didn't have permission to have a voice when I was younger as a child. And I've learned through my own growth growing up and finally getting into CODA 
that it's important that people that are there to to share about themselves and these are very can be very traumatic or difficult scenarios they've been through and trying to understand why they are doing or feeling the way they are um so it has to start from day one and throughout the process of, of those first four steps um i try to make them feel comfortable um and establish that relationship with them um and of course in in asking them why they are they want to be a sponsor or why they want a sponsor uh they've always seen the purpose as wanting to find out why they are codependent what makes them a codependent they do attend their meetings they do read the material but to actually be sitting one on one with somebody for an hour or more uh for them it's a gift and for me it's a gift um especially in the last few months i'm sensing with the sponsees that i have that it's almost a co-sponsor relationship it's like we're we're talking back and forth like having a conversation uh two buddies talking if you wish uh some are more open to that than others so each sponsee is different um and you know it to me it takes a lot of humor because it can get very painful for them for the sponsee it can get very intense and emotional so i try to add a little bit of humor when possible and when it's appropriate of course um and switching back gears to when i was a sponsee um i remember telling my i've had two spo- two sponsors in coda and right off the bat i would tell them i don't want anything to be uh, candy coated i need for them to be as as honest and as blunt as possible which they probably were already to do but i wanted to make them realize that i was committed i wanted to find out and get to the bottom of this why i was i had all these shortcomings so now the roles are reversed when i'm the sponsor and these sponsees are are sharing their experience strength and hope to me it's important to open up my ears and my heart and that relationship that's where it really clicks that it is a spiritual one that at every moment that we meet there's three of us in the room the other the sponsee or the sponsee and the sponsor uh because i do play both roles um and the higher power and i don't know how many times i've experienced uh in listening to a sponsee and i get these uh questions popping up in my head or thoughts and i'm it's like i'm sensing something happening in the sponsee and it it's very i call it weird but it's it's um it's new for me this this feeling so i'll i'll kind of ask the sponsee can you know can i ask you a question about something you've said uh and of course you know i'll wait for the appropriate time and they usually always relay what it is they're feeling and then i'll comment on that i'll you respond have one more minute. sorry <laughs> sorry you have one more minute what oh jeez okay <laughs> the main uh I, i wrote down some of the the main elements that a sponsor i for myself that i've discovered that are especially important and one is being detached because uh i am i consider myself an emotional type so i need to be detached from whatever the person is sharing uh a lot of compassion is necessary to me compassion is that divine feeling that I totally accept and understand and believe what this other person is sharing with me. Uh I need to be patient that what they are sharing I might be a little bit more in a hurry than they are, but I have to respect their time and for them to be ready. 
uh, and I need to, the last thing I wrote down is listen, listen, listen. Always be aware of what the sponsee is trying to say. And from the sponsee's point of view, what I've asked of them is to be totally honest with themselves and with me. Uh, that doing this kind of recovery work, working the steps, and especially the fifth one, after having done the fourth, which is almost the most difficult step there is, uh, that it is probably one of the most difficult things they'll do in their life. And that's okay. That I'm there to support them. But they need to be honest with me. And usually that shows. I, I can usually tell when they're not. But most of the time they are. Um, and I see the sponsees slowly de- developing this new uh, this new freedom or their on- authenticity. They they actually begin to change the more they reveal about themselves. They're peeling away the layers of that onion that we referred to. And that is so important. And when they realize themselves, the things they didn't realize the meaning before, you know, I give them a high five because that is, I'd rather they discover themselves than for me to spoon feed them. Uh, I'm just there to mentor, to, to tag along, so to speak. Um, and to be open to their questions. So I'll stop it at that. Okay, thank, thank you, you very Barry. much. Um, Paula, w- uh, would you be in, uh, be willing to be next? I don't hear you. <laughs> I have something written down. Here. Okay. So, so hello, my name is Paula, and I'm codependent. Um, So this is my first time speaking on a forum. I'm grateful that I have this opportunity to share my experience, strength, and hope on step five. I'm going to start mine with more of a perspective of of, uh, a person working a step five. Uh, Having done my own step fifth, I have also heard a few of myself. Um... I've come to understand the significance of this step um, to everyone's personal uh, recovery, the importance of it. From my own experience, uh, step five set me free from, from shame, guilt, and my fears. However, it did take me some time before I actually worked the fifth step. Uh, one of my biggest flaws is procrastination. And, uh, and before recovery, I was a master at avoidance. I put off working the fifth step by avoiding doing my four-step inventory. I did attempt several times to work this step, uh, but I would always start and then put it down thinking I would get back to it the next day. I did this for quite some time, starts and stops. And it wasn't until my, until I had been in CODA for two years and my husband had started his own personal recovery in another fellowship. And he finished his four step before I did. And so I realized that I was very stalled and I needed to get over it. Um, so I don't know whether it was the competitor in me or what it was that triggered me. Perhaps it was my higher power's way of saying no more delays, finish that four step already. So I realize now it was fear that uh, was holding me back, uh, the fear of not really liking who I was and not really wanting to do that fearless moral inventory and really discovering that about myself. Um, I was an expert at hiding. And one of my best defense mechanism was to withdraw and isolate myself. I didn't want anyone to, to see this perceived version I had of myself. And I really didn't want to see it myself. 
I had done such an excellent job of suppressing my true self, I was afraid to look deep inside and do that fearless moral inventory. Yet, step four helped me to begin the process of opening that door I was hiding behind. And then step five became the way for me to be willing to accept myself. When I did complete my inventory, I had such a sense of accomplishment. I was so excited, I had to tell someone from my own group right away. She suggested that I find a person who I really trusted and who had experience listening to Fifth Steps and make that appointment ASP. With my history of procrastination, I knew the importance of making that appointment. I also knew who it was I was going to ask. I liked, um, so I was ready. I was ready to move on to this step. Once step four was done, I, it just felt I had to get on to step five. I knew at that time that this was the, the cleansing process that is talked about in our uh, Code of Blue book. And I really, I really felt that. I really felt that um, at that time that I needed to continue with that. And I looked at step five and it's broken up into three parts. And I believe it was my sponsor that had pointed that out to me or some other wise person in my group to break that up. And that's what I did. So the first part directed me to admit to God and to do the God of my understanding, the exact nature of my wrongs. I was already, had already trusted in my higher power and put great trust in my higher power to guide me on my spiritual journey of self-discovery. So I found it easy to admit to her the exact nature of my wrongs. She helped me face my fear and my imperfections. Up to this point, I had been my worst critic and could not see the good in me. But God helped me to see that in spite of my wrongdoings, there was goodness in there. And I was able to admit this to myself. The importance of doing a step four inventory is to, to find out those, work through your resentments and fears and anger. And, but it's also there to help you find out the good pieces and not be so critical of yourself. Now I was on a roll and I did not want to delay working through this step anymore. I was not completely comfortable telling another person the exact nature of my wrongs, but I was willing. Besides the person I was doing this with was my sponsor and I completely trusted her. I admire her recovery. She is patient, kind and a safe person. So I felt comfortable enough to be completely honest with her. I was right. She listened to me without judgment. This was so refreshing to actually have someone listen and not interrupt me and not give me any advice. I had plenty of those in my life, so it was really great to be able to express myself and not get interrupted. I was able to flow and, and really express myself freely. She was also really generous with her time as it took me two sessions to get up, get through my fifth step. I told her my deepest, darkest secrets. One I felt such shame over, I thought I would never tell a soul. But my sponsor's compassion allowed me to open up to her in a way I had not experienced with another person before. The intimacy we shared with each other was beautiful. She gently pointed out to me how my secrets were not as shameful as I had once, thought, once believed. That the dark secrets I exposed to her were really pretty normal human behavior. I was able to admit the hurt I had caused others and the hurt I had caused myself. 
I understood then that I was perfectly, no it was perfectly normal to be imperfect. I left my last session with her feeling like a huge weight had been lifted off my shoulders. I was proud to have overcome my fear and to be honest with God, myself, and another human. I found in me the strength and courage I needed to unlock that door and to emerge a precious and free person. It wasn't long after I had finished my step fifth that I was asked to be a sponsor myself. I felt um, that I was not qualified, but I explained I was willing to do this and I could at least get her through the first three steps. But this relationship grew and I found that working with her was so, um, so incredible. I, it helped me kind of go through step one, two and three and four again, all by as well myself as with her. And when it came time for her to do her fifth step, she asked me to be that person to listen. And I explained to her, like, I haven't done this before. I don't know if that's right. You know what? I was advised to have to, to go with somebody that was experienced. And here she was asking me, and I wasn't experienced in listening to a fifth step. So I had to, I had to think about it and I, I let her know that and I prayed and I consulted with my own sponsor and my sponsee really insisted. She said, no, I don't, I don't feel comfortable with anybody else. I really want to, I really want to speak with you. So at that point I knew that this was an opportunity for me to grow in my recovery as well. And if I was going to continue on this path of being a sponsor, then I was going to have to face the fact that, yes, I might have to listen to another person's fifth step. So I agree. One minute, this. sorry. <laughs> one minute. Okay, no problem. So um, I was honored and humbled. And I found that this was one of the best gifts that I could have received as a sponsor. It, I agree with Dan in 100%, the skills necessary are being compassionate, listening, and being able to step back and have the ability to detach and not and be able to be objective and be an objective listener. I put a great deal of trust in my higher power and with her guidance, um, I've now done three step fives and I'm really, really blessed to have had that opportunity. And that's it for me. Thank you very much, uh, Paula. That was uh, inspiring. Um, could I get uh, uh, Crystal to do, uh, do the next one? <laughs> yes. Hello. And I just wanted to um, say that I'm very grateful to have the opportunity to share my experience, strength, and hope on this forum. Um, The, the thing that comes to uh, mind in a sharing experience, strength, and hope is the, uh, the relationship between the steps, the traditions, and the promises. And I encourage uh, sponsees and myself and other members uh, to look at the uh, experience as being supported by our steps, the strength being supported by the traditions, and the hope with the promises. Uh, in my uh, personal journey of recovery, I use the promises a lot um, and on a very regular basis because like most codependents or perhaps all, you know, my self-esteem was uh, at a very low level when I first came into Codependence Anonymous. And so I look at those promises uh, while doing each of the steps to give me that, that hope that things 
can be can be different and that they will be different if I make an honest attempt to to do whatever is necessary in this process. When when working with a, a sponsee, um, the first thing I do is before going before going into the home or wherever we are meeting is that I connect with my higher power and put uh, the personality side of myself aside and ask that higher power will use me as a messenger. So me as my personality is aside, I just, um, I want to be the clearest channel I can to provide uh, assistance in the sponsee's journey of recovery. Um, I've had the opportunity in my past as well uh, to work the steps in some recovery homes. And that, that was an, an invaluable uh, lesson to me in assisting assisting people working through the steps. And setting aside the differences and doing my best to communicate with whomever is on the other side that no one is better, no one is worse. We are all on this journey together and anyone working any form of 12 steps are the courageous ones that are going to attain uh, absolute treasure and success to the degree that they are, are willing to be open and willing and honest in the process. Um, the, I ask the Swansea how they would like things to uh, to unfold if they would just like to share the step five uninterrupted. Would they like the feedback? Um, would they like, uh, for instance, uh, at the end of, of the period that they are discussing, you know, to say you might want to consider not a, not in the form of advice giving, but uh, as an example, it'd be like I noticed you used the word terrific, um, but the story didn't sound horrific. You might want to just uh, consider in using that word, perhaps how deeply it went. The, the program uh, of Codependence Anonymous, to me, one of the core issues is, um, goes back to Tradition 3, the only requirement for membership in CODA is a desire for a healthy and loving relationships. And the relationships that are at the core of our of our recovery are the relationships uh, with ourselves and our higher power and with others. And my experience uh, for myself, and I notice for most people who begin attending or, and begin the journey, is that it's all about the relationships with others. And the process of working through the steps is all about first developing that relationship with ourself and our higher power. And I encourage people to consider that once we have a foundation of, of a relationship with our higher self, our true self, and our higher power, the automatic 
benefit is that our relationships with with others just automatically unfold. The challenge is when we when we come into uh, this program and other 12-step programs is that we think we we know who we are, but in reality, um, when we begin to look at the patterns and characteristics of codependence, we realize that these things that I thought were myself were the only tools that I had available to me as a child in coping with whatever situation we happen to be in. And we have all experienced some form of trauma, otherwise we would not be here, uh, or pain. And, and we just had the tools available at that time as a child. And so we, we pick those tools up. But now we are adults and we have different tools available to us in the Fellowship of Codependence Anonymous. And so if we are truly willing, not just wanting, but willing to take the steps necessary, things will change. And going back to the promises, working through each of the steps, if we consider each of those promises and say, okay, for instance, uh, okay, we're on step five, so I know a new love and acceptance of myself and others. I feel genuinely lovable, loving, and loved. That is huge. So just encouraging people at the end of this process, there, there will be a peace. We may not feel completely, genuinely lovable, loving, and loved, but there will be a peace. There will be an open or opening where that light can shine through and we can begin to feel it, feel it in our hearts as, as, as a possibility. If, if somebody is, if a sponsee is, how should I say, close to one aspect uh, of, of the recovery work, that's okay. And I say, do you think there might be a possibility, just a tiny possibility, that this could be different? And the response is usually that, yes, yes, I can, I can see that maybe there's a possibility. We're not going to recover overnight. We're not going to recover over a few years. This is process, and it is a beautiful, beautiful process. Um, and a sharing one, as was mentioned earlier, um, because it is such an honor to be at, not only asked to do a step five with someone, but an honor for us to have the opportunity to learn more uh, about this process, learn more from that, that person, the sponsee, and learn more about ourselves. And it is truly a gift. And when we, uh, as sponsors, um, acknowledge that we are an instrument for our higher power and set ourselves aside and feeling that expression of, of the beauty that can come through us as we um, do our best to set our own personality and, and codependency aside. Yeah, about one minute. Thank you. Um, I'll just uh, finish up with um, with looking at the patterns and characteristics of codependence. I won't go through them all, but I was looking at them in relationship to two step five and I like to encourage people before they do a step five of reviewing those patterns, the denial patterns, identifying what they're feeling, um, 
thinking that they can take care of themselves without any help from others, or perhaps the program, which can lead to isolation, our low self-esteem patterns, uh, judging what we think say or or do harshly as never good enough. There's often that tendency to, am I going to do a perfect step five? No, none of us, none of us as human beings have done a perfect step five. It's a process. And, um, and also looking at the compliance patterns, uh, being extremely loyal, remaining in harmful situations too long, which I think is a real key because who are we being loyal to? Are we being loyal to ourselves? Or are we being, to me this is absolutely crucial, are we being loyal to the costume or the masquerade that we have taken on for so many years thinking that is ourself? And it's, it's not ourself. And this is, this is the process that we're working through to discover that beauty, that unique and precious human being that is, is the truth of who we are. And then, of course, the control patterns <laughs> and, and avoidance. So, uh, yeah, I just in conclusion, and thank you for the time, I just keep returning to the truth of who we are. If we're working with truth in this process, we have to discover the truth of who we are. And the more we discover that, the more opportunity and opening there is for a higher power to express through us in all its beauty. Thank you, Sharon. Uh, thank you, Crystal. Uh, that's a good, good um, ideas, uh, both uh, being a uh, sponsor or someone taking step five and as a person who is uh, receiving the step five. Uh, let me see. Jay, would you be willing to be the next to speak up? <laughs> Yes, <laughs> thank you. I'm Jay. And um, I have been working the 12 steps for 15 years in other fellowships. Yeah, I've been in CODA for seven years. <clears throat> and um, for the, me, me the, the 12 steps and recovery is a very personal process. Um, and so I have had one sponsor for that number of years, and I'm very grateful to that person every day uh, that I have somebody to contact, uh, to touch base, and just to know that that person knows just about everything about me. Uh, and that's a wonderful experience. So, <clears throat> and I currently serve as a sponsor for three other people. And um, so this relationship is very important. What I think is a big part of this is that um, the individual deal with their negative perceptions about themselves. So <clears throat> if we look at step four, five, and six, um, step five is talking about our wrongs. Uh, step six is talking about our defects. Step seven is talking about our shortcomings. So it was a lot of negativity in those things. And so what I have to do myself and what I help sponsors recognize is it sounds very negative. I mean, I've had people tell me, well, I'm not going to do code. I don't need to, uh, you know, it's not a disease. I uh, attended a code meeting this week and the, you know, a person who's done a lot of recovery, AA included, said the whole disease issue, to think of it as dis-ease, it's, it's uncomfortable. It's issues that that um, result in my not being comfortable with myself. So, so now I'm, and I'm on the edge. I'm defensive. I have to defend myself, and I'm insecure. So that, I think, in, in the long run, and like Crystal just said, the patterns and characteristics are a, a major part of the steps. It's very hard to do the steps without the complete package. So you look at the meeting materials of what is required for a meeting, Patterns and characteristics are a part of that. So, so um, if we look at this, I recently had an individual uh, from an, a meeting tell me that uh, her step five is acknowledge to God, to myself, 
and to another human being my exact nature. So it, it really even sidesets the issue of, okay, I'm done with the shame. I'm done with the wrong. I know I did wrong. What is my nature? What is my character? What is ongoing? This is an ongoing process. It's not, okay, I did step five. I'm done. And I, you know, I, you know, and I have, I did that 10 years ago and I'm not ever doing anything again. It's a process. Um, so the question then is what is character? How do I, how do I look at my character? How do I look at my nature in an ongoing way rather than bathing myself in guilt and shame? So we want to, what I'm very sensitive to, and I'm working on a workshop right now, and the title of the workshop is Shame and Shamers. I've heard sponsors who are shamers, and they might think that's a good idea. I don't know. I don't from my own personal experience, because what we're doing is we're it's sort of a codependent and helping a codependent by saying you should be ashamed. Um, so, and shaming is actually part of a tone of voice. It's actually a you know, you can sense that the person, and I believe that shamers, people who shame others, are dealing with shame themselves. So the question is, how do we deal with this character? Uh, I think from my years of being in recovery, the issue is to react less and reflect more. Prayer and meditation are very important for us to find out our core beliefs. Who, who am I? Who, what is my core nature? I'm a good person. The affirmations, CODA has affirmations. Are they read in your meeting? You know, are you familiar with them? Or do we look for the negative? Do we look for the wrongs? Are we looking for the shame? Are we the shame police? Uh, so the question is, how do I affirm myself? Is it okay to feel positive? about myself. So in my relationships with sponsees, and I also recommend strongly accountability partners, <clears throat> may not be as formal as sponsorship, but accountability is somebody that you can call. You know, we just had a meeting, code of meeting, and they were saying that since everything is digital online, people don't talk to each other. You know, find somebody you can actually talk to. Um, to share your reactions. So for ourself in recovery and for as we work with other people in sponsorship or accountability, there's an old railroad crossing we have here in the States. And there's three words in the railroad crossing. Stop, look, and listen. Stop. Just stop. Stop your reactions. Stop the negativity. Just stop. Observe and listen. Stop, look, and listen. So this is something you can do in the real world when you're, when you're saying, this person's driving me crazy. Why is she so lazy? Why is he such a slob? Um, so when we, when we react and with uncertainty, that's what triggers our codependency. These reactions are usually self-defeating. Our self-defeating codependency can be what we think what we feel, and how we react. So if I think something, do my feelings follow that? Um, you know, do, do my, how does my reaction follow? So if I'm thinking negative thoughts, do I feel shame? Do I feel guilt or do I feel anger? So in the uh, 12 steps program, in the literature, the character reactions are actually identified that are codependent. Um, and there can be uh, anxiety. Maybe it's depression for you. Poor me, uh, I'm a victim. Shame, maybe you're a shamer. Uh, guilt, these are codependent reactions. Anger, resentment. You know, we just had family to get together. You can see people who are still bathing themselves in resentment. Negative codependent reactions can be fear. Fear of memories, past history. Fear of the unknown. If we deal with ourself, we're less likely to have fear. So how do we do this? Well, here's, here's some steps that I listed, and kind of in order, if you will. First, we do wrong. You know, we, we got to admit it. We did something wrong, we admit it. 
Next is remorse. Is there such a thing, and I'm asking this question, if you want to give some feedback or answer it in the chat, you can. Is there such a thing as realistic shame? Is there a better word than shame? Should I have remorse? Of course. Uh, next, then, is to make amends. So what is amends? Well, when we think of the amendments to the Constitution, something changed. So when we make amends, it's changing something. Um, and if we do that, we're, we increase our awareness. We're more likely to accept ourselves. And this then gets to step five, believe it or not. If I can accept myself through an accountability relationship, through a sponsor, then I'm going to get to the point where I can actually do step five, that I admit it to God, to myself, to a sponsor, to an accountability partner the exact nature of my wrongs. To do that, there are sponsors that I wouldn't trust just because of my own issues. So a sponsor accountability relationship is best based on trust and to feel safe being vulnerable. So vulnerability is an important part of recovery. To be vulnerable means that you're trusting that person that you're sharing very intimate parts of your life. So find a trusting relationship. Don't say, okay, I need a sponsor, raise my hand. Okay, you, you're it. Uh, you know, I, I think it's, it's a lot more sensitive than that. So take your time. If a sponsor isn't working for you and you don't trust the person and you feel like it's a shaming experience, uh, keep moving on and try to find a kind of relationship where you can disclose to God, to this person, and to yourself the exact nature of your character. If you do this, these steps, what you will feel, in my experience, is gratitude. You'll learn to love the self. You know, self-care, taking care of ourselves. It's not selfish. It's not selfish to take care of yourself. But we live in a society where you might have heard that. Oh, you're just being, you're just being snooty. You're just being proud. You're just, you know. Uh, so if we do these steps and we get to the point then where we have a relationship where we begin to trust others, we're going to experience more positive relationships and more positive relationship with ourselves. If not, we continue to bathe ourselves in these character patterns. And I, rather than character defects, I call them character patterns. Um, you know, this is who we are. Yeah, I stole an apple off the, off the porch when I was going to school one day. You know, those kinds of things. And just to acknowledge that and to try to have a relationship where you can trust that carefully, that it doesn't come back as a shaming experience. So if we don't participate in our recovery, we're back to the negative thoughts, the negative feelings, feeling alone, isolated, alienated, afraid, resentful, angry, anxious, depressed. Now, the reason I think that this is an ongoing process is if you look at step 10, this is a continuation, continue to take personal inventory. I get a little concerned when people say they did step five and so they're done with personal inventory. Step, you know, step 10, it's an ongoing process where we feel comfortable that when we're wrong, we address it. You know, honesty is the best policy. It's a process. It's a lifestyle. And so that's what we, it, so if we can get to that point, then we're going to be making progress in our recovery. So a lot of times what happens is we don't have any control. It's the control compliance pattern that was just discussed. And of course, these are one of the main patterns and characteristics. So, okay, I don't have any control. So what am I going to do to get control in my life? This is where addictions, compulsions, well, I'm just going to go, I'm just going to do this. I'm just going to do that. I'm gonna, I'll do that. I'll get, I'll get drunk. I'll, you know, I'll go shopping. 
So all of the addictions and the compulsions can combine in with codependency because it gives us a sense that we might have control. In relationships, domestic violence, there was a song years ago and the lyrics were, do I go or do I stay? Do I stay or do I go? Compliance, control. Do I stay or do I go? Compliance, control. Um, so we want to get to the point where we're discussing this with a sponsor in an accountability relationship, maybe have a step group where you have additional sharing uh, that's based on trust. Uh, what is said here stays here. So you want to find your core beliefs, find affirmations published by CODA on affirmations for each step. There's daily affirmations. Go with affirmations, which are, I am a good person. I'm doing my best. I will do better, but I can, I'm you doing have about my one best. Minute. So stick with core beliefs rather than the negative reaction. Stick with positive. So when you have negative thoughts, all of those negative thoughts, reflect. Stop, 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 stop. Listen, you know, observe and listen. Stop, look, and listen. Choose positive affirmations and pray. And I want to end with something that's from the welcome. We've all learned to survive life. But in Coda, we're learning to live life. We've all learned to survive. But in Coda, we're learning to live the process in healthy ways. All of the steps. All the patterns and characteristics. All the traditions. We're applying the 12 steps and principles found in Coda to our daily life and relationships, both present and past. We can experience a new freedom from our self-defeating lifestyles. It's an individual growth process. Each of us is growing at our own pace and will continue to do so as we remain open to God's will for us on a daily basis. Our sharing in accountability in sponsorship is a way of identification. This helps to free us from the emotional bonds of our past and the compulsive control of the present. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon. Mm, thank you, Jay. <laughs> Uh, lots to think about there. Wow. <clears throat> uh, uh, Richard, you're last but not least. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, I am codependent as hell. My name is Richard. Um, for the last five years, I've been a very proud member of the Progress Not Perfection Group of Codependents Anonymous. And as of a couple of weeks ago, I've moved home to Saskatoon. Saskatchewan, which uh, and the uh, Experience, Strength, and Hope group of Codependence Anonymous, which is where I grew up in Coda. Um, I had a conversation last night with a friend that uh, we, we were talking about uh, uh, taking people through the steps, and we kind of concluded that uh, the two steps where people tend to s stall out are step four and step eight in our experience. And the reason for that, I think, is that when we're new, the, the two scariest steps are step five and step nine. Uh, I know that when I was new, uh, I, I, I tried to do what Crystal talked about. I tried to do the perfect fourth step. Um, I actually did three full fourth step inventories completed before I ever did the fifth. And, and the reason for that is, is really simple. If you're trying to do the, the perfect fourth step inventory, you never finish. And if you never finish, you uh, don't have to do the fifth. Uh, I had this fantasy in my head that if I ever did the fifth step, it was going to be with a blind priest dying of cancer in Calgary. Um, why he had to be blind, I'm not sure, but, uh, the, the, the dying and in Calgary part were important to me. My, my ideal was that I would drive to Calgary and I would sit down with, with him and, and he would, uh, hear me out and, uh, 
uh, send me on my way. And as, as I reached the uh, outskirts of Calgary, he would expire. And it would be back to just me being the only one that knew that stuff. But I would have fulfilled the technical requirements of the fifth step as I understood them at the time. And I'm really fortunate. And then a little while after that, I found myself in a meeting uh, where the topic was the fifth step. And I heard a couple of long timers sharing and the stuff that they shared disarmed my fears about the fifth step and, and allowed me to participate. Um, since then, I, I have come to an, a, a new understanding of the fifth step. Um, I'm, I'm someone who believes in working the steps the way they are written, and, and, and I uh, and trying to uh, work each step with the purpose of that step in mind. And if I'm looking at the fifth step, I need to look at it in context, where it, where it sits in amongst the other steps. What is it that I'm trying to accomplish in the fifth step? And in, in step one, uh, I've admitted that I'm powerless and that my life is unmanageable. Um, to paraphrase, I've got a problem so big that I'm unable to solve it and that my attempts to solve it make the problem worse. I'm powerless and my life is unmanageable. Step two says, well, there's, there, there's a solution. Uh, and then step three says, I'm going to decide right here, right now to give the solution a shot. I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to try one day at a time to do the things that I think a loving higher power would have me do. And I get to the third step and I have no idea how to turn my will and my life over to care of this higher power. I just know that it's a good idea. And so that sets the stage for the fourth step. Because in the fourth step, what I'm really trying to do is I'm trying to have a look in um, the, the darkest nooks and crannies of my life and figure out what is it what is it that's getting in the way of me living happy, joyous, and free, of me having healthy and loving relationships with the people around me. And then we get to the fifth step. And something happens in the fifth step that sets the stage for the sixth and seventh steps where these defects of character, these things that are getting in my way, I'm not even doing the heavy lifting. There's, there's this higher power who, whose job it is to remove those from me. So what happens in the fifth step? In the fifth step, I admit to my higher power, to myself and to this other human being, the exact nature of my wrongs. And if I'm going to key in on one word, in the fifth step, it's going to be the word exact. Because that's what happens for me. And that's what I try to do with the guys that I sponsor, is to come to a more precise understanding of what the hell is going on, what's getting in the way. And so the process of the fifth step really is to take what I've, what I've discovered in that four step inventory and filter it through the perspective of somebody who's not emotionally involved in the baggage of my life, who, who's, who's not immersed in the garbage, who has a clear perspective or just a perspective that I may not have considered. And when I do that, or when other guys have done that with me, this marvelous thing happens. And, and, and it's something that, that that's part of the magic of, of what happens in our rooms. Somebody says, me too. You know, I think that's the most powerful thing that ever gets said in our, in, in our rooms. Um, newcomer comes in and from their perspective, they're unique. Nobody else has ever felt this way. Nobody's ever, ever had these crazy thoughts. Nobody's done these, these incredibly insane things. Uh, nobody's had these, these, these crazy feelings before. And then somebody says, me too. And, and the newcomer discovers that he's in a room full of people who are all unique the same way. That's, that's the power in the fifth step for me is, is to lay out the things that I thought were the worst parts of me and have somebody say, well, I did that. Well, I felt that way. 
And by the way, I don't have to do that anymore. Since I did that first fifth step, which in my case was a a seven hour conversation um, that uh, was like running a marathon, um, you know, I've had the opportunity to to go through the same exercise with dozens and dozens and dozens of guys, and it's a powerful experience for me every time. Um, I remember when I finished that 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 first fifth step of mine, and and it, it was four o'clock in the frickin' morning. And my my sponsor at the time um, hugged me, and he told me that he still loved me. You know, that's a powerful feeling. That idea that that somebody else can know all of it and still love me now and to come away from that with 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 the idea that uh i'm not unique and that there's a way out that's that's the stuff that's powerful to me in the fifth step and it's what i what i uh try to convey to the to the guys that i have the privilege of hearing from um, I like to start with a prayer these days and it goes along the lines of higher power. Please help this man to say the things that he needs to say and help me to hear the things that I need to hear and help me to say the things that you want me to say and help him to hear the things that he needs to hear. And that's really the process, you know, to, to listen without judgment, uh, as we've heard before, but to also be able to interject and, and, and to say, you know, have you considered to say, uh, aren't you being just a little hard on yourself over here? Or once in a while, uh, hey, have you, have you um, missed the fact that you may have hurt this person in the process? Um, and in the process to come to a, a more precise understanding of the exact nature of my defects of character, of the things that get in between me and my higher power and me and the people around me. Because what's happening in six and seven is that I'm going to be asked to cooperate with that stuff to, as my higher power sets about giving me opportunities to do something different. I need to know what's coming. And that's, that's the essential nature of the fifth step for me. Um, I really have nothing to add. Thank you, Sharon.